Hi everyone, this is Nubira Watcher, watching the sunrise, and now this object is now at the 7 o'clock position. I'm going to catch it on time lapse and regular video. Let's zoom in a little further on this. See it behind the trees, the lens flare over here. Let's zoom in on that. See, uh, behind the trees oh my gosh people let's get right with God I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth are there spots on this thing I'm not sure the time-lapse can't zoom in on it let's go back to time-lapse Hi everyone, this is Nibiru Watcher, observing this second object. See the trees in the background, I've been catching this on time lapse. See if I can see the trees blowing in the background. What is that object? Is it Nibiru or its moon? And that black object, maybe this it couldn't be Nibiru, it's moving too fast around the sun. Or is it? Wow. Let's see that black object inside. There's almost the center of this second object. Let me zoom out a little bit. Now I'm going to leave it just like that, actually. <laughs> so let me move the camera out a little bit. You can see the lens flare there. But this, can zoom out. See the lens flare. I need to stop talking about the stupid lens flare. <laughs> Let's zoom in on this one object. 12 times optical zoom plus digital zoom. It appears to be moving closer to the sun and rotating definitely counterclockwise. It should be tracking it all throughout the day. So surprised that they're letting us see this with no chemtrails this time. Clearly you can see the pine needles in front of this object. <laughs> if you say lens flare, well, I've already left my piece with that. Let's see if I can zoom in just a hair better. I don't know if I can zoom in any better. Let's put a welder's filter in front of it, see what it looks like. It does seem to have been be too smooth of a round object to be a sun. I did. It looked like Nemesis at first when it was low on the horizon, but since it's been following up with the sun, it's fast, almost as fast as the sun is moving. Actually, it must be moving faster. Let me zoom back out a little bit. You can see, see our lens flare again here. Notice how the lens flare is coming from this object. Almost like in my other videos. I wonder what that looks like as the sun shines through this object onto the earth. Okay, I'm gonna go back to time-lapse mood. Shot of what this thing looks like. Not too impressive for the time being, but that is it. As I mentioned, it's the size of a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. And the way we're able to observe this couple ways, we use these radio telescopes. This one happens to be in Puerto Rico. Kind of interesting to see. This one you have over here, the uh, Goldstone is actually from the Mojave Desert of California. This thing is so incredibly effective. 
It can actually get an object. It can peek at an object some 10 billion miles away from planet Earth. So pretty amazing stuff. Let me show you this animation that we have from NASA. And as we pop this up, you're going to get an idea. You'll see, of course, the Earth, which is right in the middle. Then you see that line that darts right through the screen. That is the path it's going to take. It is not expected to make contact with planet Earth. But I'll tell you, if it were to, say, strike, say, the ocean, the Pacific, the Atlantic, it could make an impact that would cause a 7.0 earthquake or possibly at the same time, create a tsunami that would be up to 70 feet in height and spread out about some 60 miles from its impact zone. So pretty interesting. Good thing is, again, not expected to hit planet Earth, but it's going to make another pass a little bit closer in the year 2092. I think we're going to be okay. Maybe your grandkids might have some issues, though. Okay. Maybe great grandkids. Thanks, Reynolds. You bet. Wow, you're thinking way far ahead. Long term. <laughs>
and making these these orbits look funny. And and when we talk about the the mass of this planet X, this ninth planet being ten times that of Earth, for those who are not scientists, what does that really mean? The mass of a planet versus Earth's mass. Well, if you could put it on a scale, how much it would weigh. Yeah. I mean that's really it. And and so it's bigger, it's bulkier, it's it's got more heft, it's got more gravity. It's this huge elephant in the living room, except we didn't know it was there. You mentioned that scientists haven't seen it yet because of how far away it is and right. how dim it is. Is there a way for them to get visual evidence? Yes, so, so the biggest telescopes in the world can theoretically see this thing if they're looking in exactly the right place. And with the publication of this new paper today, uh, they are now going to start to look in earnest. How much further out there is this planet X than the rest of the planets in the solar system? I mean, it's, it's well, it's, so so Pluto we think of as the really out at the very edge, mm -hmm. the, the very farthest thing that you could call a planet, even though we don't anymore. <laughs> and um, I still I'm still supporting Pluto's I, no, right, I, right to, to be a planet. <laughs> and, um, but uh, this thing is five times further out. Wow. Than Pluto. Fascinating. Fascinating. Is yeah. there any chance it's not a planet? It, we no, there's it. always. It, it, it's very foolish to say no chance because. Um, you know, you just don't know what you don't know. But the odds are looking very, very good. 60 billion miles from the sun. Yep. Amazing stuff. Michael Lemonick, thank you so much. Fascinating stuff. Great, thanks. the sometimes planet planet may be hiding a pretty huge secret. Well, two huge secrets, actually. Astronomers in Spain believe that hiding behind Pluto, obscured from our view, are two additional giant planets. Spanish scientists in Madrid discovered the potential for the two massive celestial bodies at the outer reach, reaches of our solar system after studying strange patterns in the orbit of rocky objects around Pluto, including the newly discovered dwarf planet 2012 VP113. Scientists believe the first hidden wor world would be about 10 times the mass of Earth. They believe that this planet is moving in resonance with a bigger planet that is somewhere between Mars and Jupiter in size and would orbit 200 times the Earth's distance from the Sun. But can we ever conclusively confirm the existence of these two planets? Well, Scott Shepard at the Carnegie Institution for Science had this to say. As there are only a few of these extremely distant objects known, it's hard to say anything definitive about the number or location of any distant planets. However, in the near future, we should have more objects to work with to help us determine the structure of the outer solar system. So there you have it, time will tell. Now, here's the asteroid story. An asteroid the size of the Rose Bowl, more than a thousand feet across fields its way toward the Earth right now. It'll come by first in 2029, and we'll see it up there. It'll be closer than our satellites, a thing the size of the road bo Rose Bowl hurtling through the air. And then it comes again in 2036, and that's when it may get interesting. The debate over just how close it'll get is sparking some serious debate between Russian scientists and American scientists. Here's a satellite picture of the thing. This is from, well, with this, this and, you know, this tells you nothing. But you see it there? I don't know, that circly thing in the middle, maybe? Uh, this was from 2004. It doesn't look very intimidating here. Both sides seem to agree that in three decades, the asteroid will fly very close to Earth. But Russian scientists warn that our planet's gravity could change the asteroid's path and set it on a collision course. NASA scientists say there is a minuscule, little bitty chance of that happening. One in 250,000 better than winning the lotto, and somebody will. When joining us now, Michio Kaku. He's a theoretical, theoretical physics, physics professor at City University of New York, CUNY. He's also the author of Physics of the Future. 
and a new book coming out in about a month, and we'll tell you about that in about a month. So, good to see you. Mm -hmm. 2029, it flies by underneath the satellites. That's right. Mark it on your calendar. Friday the 13th, oh April 2036. The well, that's big the one. second pass. On the second pass, right. The first pass, like you said, it comes right underneath our satellites. You can actually see it whizzing right overhead. Wow. And on the second pass, it might actually be a nation buster. It'll take out Germany. It'll take out France, England. It not England, not hit. England. <laughs> or the, the entire northeast of the United States. Careful. It'll hit with the force of 100,000 Hiroshima bombs. Really? If It'll, it hits? If it hits, right. It's a catastrophe beyond human comprehension. And the head of the Russian Space Agency has said that the Russian scientists should think of some ways of deflecting it or, or handling this deflecting menace. Deflecting it? What are, what, are, what, I mean, what, what are we going to shoot it with a laser? Well, everyone thinks we'll send Bruce Willis out there oh, with the space shuttle. That. But the space shuttle can't even reach out of space. We're phasing it out, and the space shuttle only spins wheels around the planet Earth. It cannot even go to deep space. We need a new booster rocket to take us out there. Maybe China will build us one. Maybe, and then we have to nudge it out of the way. The farther it is, the easier it is.